primarily our mobility is in what's called the sagittal plane or straight ahead. And so it's really important to make sure that we have enough range of motion to move at the ankle and also at the ball of the foot. When you're in a typical running shoe construction, which the heel is twice as high as a forefoot, these shoes are actually designed to roll forward very easily, making this a less critical aspect. When you take the shoe away, moving towards a more minimalistic design, you lose that built-in rocker effect. So it's even more critical that we have range of motion at the ankle and the big toe. So if you lack the ability to roll forward from the ankle or at the ball of the foot, what you're gonna find is the foot tends to either roll off the outside or spins off the inside. To assess the motion at the ankle, you're going to sit down on a bench or a chair with your lower leg vertical. Then you're going to slide your butt forward such that the front of your knee is basically right over your toes. If you'd like to, you can take a foam roll or some other object and right in front of your foot and make sure that you, the front of your knee can actually touch the foam roll. This makes sure you have about 30 degrees of motion at the ankle. To assess motion at the ball of the foot, while you still have your ankle in about 30 degrees of dorsiflexion, you're going to reach down, take your big toe, and pull it up, and make sure that you have about 30 degrees of motion at the big toe. Be careful as you raise your big toe that you don't take your foot and roll to the outside, roll to the inside. It's a sign that, that there's not enough range of motion in this area. If you find this test that you don't have enough range of motion to move at the ankle, the simple thing to do is to work on stretching your soleus. The best way to stretch your soleus is to do a typical rudder stretch or a calf stretch However, one trick is to take a towel roll and stick it up under the big toe or the inside of the arch. This locks the foot to ensure that as you stretch forward, you actually are stretching the, the Achilles tendon and soleus and not just perianting your foot. If you find you don't have the ability to lift up the big toe with your ankle flexed forward, that means you have tightness in the plantar fascia. Plantar fascia runs from the base of the, of the heel all the way to the front of the ball of the foot. While stretching the plantar fascia is an often used treatment, it takes 10 to 12 weeks to see results. A much faster option is to do what we call self-tissue release. Take your fingers and apply pressure over the plantar fascia. Apply pressure with your thumbs and basically take your toes, flex them back and forth. It's a nice simple way to free up adhesions. It's important to make sure that we don't just have adequate foot strength, but we have adequate foot coordination. A simple test for this is something we call toe yoga. And what you're going to do is work on separating out motion of the big toe from motion of little toes. When in single leg stance during running, about 80 85 percent of your support should come from your big toe. So it's important that we can actually separate and drive the big toe down. What you're going to do is you sit or stand and let your foot lay naturally on the floor. With your ankle relaxed, lift up your big toe off the floor, set it back down lift your little toes off the ground while taking your big toe and pressing it down into the floor. Alternate back and forth. While this may seem challenging, it's not an issue with strength, it's more coordination. So when you talk about stabilization of the foot, it's important to think of what structures are working inside the foot. When you curl your toes, okay, so when we see this joint bend, we're actually seeing a muscle activate this in the shin, okay, not necessarily in the foot. You only have, relax, you only have two structures that are actually inside the foot that stabilize the medial longitudinal arch. Okay? One of them is your plantar fascia. Your plantar fascia is a nice structure. It tends to uh, bind down and give support in the uh, structure of the foot, but doesn't actually serve to maintain motion between your forefoot and rear foot, or the torsion or twisting motion that you have. So we want to basically teach you how to activate muscles inside the feet. The only muscle you have that stabilizes the arch is called your flexor hallucis brevis. It runs from the back side of the heel, to just in front of the, the ball of the foot. And so what we're going to do is train you to isolate a motion which is just moving the ball of the foot and not actually curling the end of the big toe. So to do this, you can take a binder, piece of cardboard, plastic, and you're going to stick it right under the big toe so it basically comes up to the base of the foot. The important thing is you want to keep the inside and the outside of the ball of the foot down on the ground. Take your opposite hand and raise up and then have pushed down into the board, keeping that toe nice and long. Make sure you keep the heel down as you are to push straight down on the board. Push, 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 push. Good, ease off. Push, 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 push. Again, if you find the toe tends to curl as you raise up, that means you're going back and dominating with muscles in the, in the shin and not muscles inside the foot. Okay. During running, you don't just have to support your body weight you have to support about two and a half times your body weight. 
and during a very short period of time. So the muscles have to activate very fast in a very controlled manner to keep you stable. A simple way to assess this is to look at your single leg balance. Try and stand on one leg with your hands and your hips. Can you keep your foot nice and stable on the floor? Do you tend to shift from the trunk excessively? Feel this. If you need to, use a mirror or have a friend watch you and rate you. If this is easy, go to step number two. Try and close your eyes and repeat the same procedure. Again, if you can keep the first toe on the ground, then you can actually keep the body stable. We're also going to combine a second idea behind posture alignment. A lot of us have a tendency to stand with excessive arch or curve in the low back. When we have excessive arch or curve in the low back, we tend to put weight more backwards on the foot. The problem is all the muscles which give us our lateral and rotational support in the foot and ankle don't attach to the rear foot, they attach to the forefoot. So it's essential as we practice single leg balance and trying to improve our stability during the stance phase of running is trying to, to alter our posture. Put one hand in the belly button with the opposite hand on the front of the chest or the sternum. While keeping the belly button stable, slightly drop your chest forward only to the point where you feel weight move to the middle part of the foot. This ensures that you're in a nice stable position. Now, try and drive down to the big toe as you did in the toe yoga exercise and you should feel an improvement in stability. If you found these tests challenging, the best way to improve your single leg stance is to practice single leg stance. Practice this often. Brushing your teeth, washing dishes, barbecuing, making dinner, making your kids lunch. Try and stand on one foot as much as you can. Balance and proprioception exercises are best done frequently in small doses. When you get better at this, try and add things. Add rotation. Try and close your eyes. Open your eyes. Have a friend throw a medicine ball or throw a medicine ball against the wall. Adding rotation in increases the level of difficulty and make sure that you know how to use the coordination and strategy in your foot.